All right, so we're gonna do some quick calculations and then a scatter plot. So we've got an initial mass and final mass of our gummy bears. What we can do in this change of mass column, if, if we don't wanna get out our calculator, we can actually have the spreadsheet do it itself. And the way we do that is we're gonna hit the equal sign and rather than do a function, we're gonna make our own function. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the final mass and then hit the subtract sign and then the initial mass and then hit the check mark or hit enter. All right, and there it calculates it for me. So now what I can do is when I select that, I can copy, all right, I'm gonna select it, hit copy, and then I'm going to select the rest of the cells that I want the calculation to occur. And then if I hit paste, what it does is it copies all the ones of the final mass minus the initial mass to give me the change in mass. And so that relative formula is preserved. Or you can do it by hand using, you know, you could do it by hand, yeah, write it out, or you could use a, a calculator if you want. Okay, so now I have change in mass, and the thing I want to graph is my molar concentration, that's my independent variable, and my change in mass as my dependent variable. And so in order to do that, I am going to need to put these two columns together. So I'm going to copy this one and put it down here. And I'm going to copy this one and put it down here. And now they're right together, and so when I select them, they will be able to make a graph. If I try and select everything here, then it's gonna give me some funky graph. So I'm just gonna select the ones that I want, put them together, and then I'm gonna hit the plus sign on the right, I'm gonna hit chart, and I'm not, I don't want that chart, I want a scatter plot. And, let's see. It did not work. Oh, change of mass, messed up. Oh, so there's a problem. So what happened is when I pasted it, it pasted the formula as well, when in reality, I want these absolute values. So I'm gonna have to type them in, all right? And now I should be able to get it to work. All right, I'm going to make sure these are negative because that's going to be important. We'll see in a second. There we go. All right, so now when I try, hit the plus sign, select it, hit the plus sign, hit chart, go to scatter chart, and boom. That's more like what I want to see. Um, you can try, if I, I've tried some of these line ones, but it gives you this, you know, this is not what I'm looking for. Um, or this one either. So. There's probably a way to get those to work, but that's not working here. So scatter plot. I'm going to then change according to the instructions I've been given to take off the legend, select none, and then go to titles. My horiz let's do horizontal axis first. That's going to be molarity of solution, right? And then my y-axis is going to be change in mass in grams of gummy bears. All right, that looks good. I can then hit the check mark. Here's my graph. And now what I can do with this is I can extrapolate it looks like none of them had zero. If I had one of these concentrations at zero, I would say, oh, that's the 
isotonic concentration. But I'm going to extrapolate. Now, if I, if I was using a different software, it would be able to tell me. It would fit a line into this, and it would tell me exactly where the line crosses the axis. But Google Sheets doesn't have that. So I can see that at the molarity of 2, it was above. And the molarity of 3.5, it was below. And, um, you know, just eyeballing it, I can tell that it's probably going to be more closer to the 2 just barely than it is the 3.5. So let's say 2.5 um, is, is my estimate. Approximately at 2.5. I would have an isotonic solution. All right, all right. So then this you you could then um, put into a word processor, create your fig figure caption, and you're good.